<laughs> now you know, I said when I switched to my new format that's been working well for me, particularly on Patreon, I said, man, I was going to get away from uh, multiple responses, response type videos, rebuttal type videos, back and forth beef type videos. Yeah, tired of all that, that drama. And if I had to uncomfortably bring race into issue, not saying that non-black people have not taken swipes at me, because you know your boy in London, Nick Krauser, he, he's a Caucasian guy, and he took a swipe at me on Rolo Tomasi's channel, so I can't say it's just all black men. But if we keeping it real, since I've been on YouTube, that's the vast majority of guys who throw a haterade my way? Again, not exclusively. Notifications. But primarily, I ain't gonna go into a long admonishment against black man again. But I got a few things to say starting off this video. I got a few things to say about some brothers on YouTube. Number one, speaking of YouTube, man. I ain't never seen so much bullshit. Non-black fans, you gotta excuse me, man. When I talk to brothers, man, I gotta throw out the N-word, man. I don't really like to use that with my non-black fans, clients, and supporters, man. But you know I keep shit real. Man, all this nigga shit, man. All this nigga shit. I don't see this shit in my real life. I really don't. And I've said this multiple times before. The people I socialize in my real life, man, they don't be about nigga shit. Nigga drama, nigga bickering, jealousy and envy, hater raid. I don't be around motherfuckers like that in my real life, man. Because the people I socialize with in real life, man, they got so much going on in their life, man. They ain't got time to be in, immersed in nigga drama, man. But somebody sent me a live, I had a couple people send me things in the last 24 hours. Somebody sent me a, a, a live stream where my name was brought up like two or three times and somebody sent me, somebody, somebody's written something about me in the comment section. And, you know, I can't respond to everything that, that people say about me. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw some quick thoughts out here, a quick thoughts as well as quick admonishment to some of my fellow brothers, particularly these young brothers. Number one. And I told Big Mike this when I did my, my interview with him that most of y'all probably can't hear because I think he made it a Patreon exclusive. Big Mike from Back City Limits. Shout out to him. A lot of y'all niggas, man. A lot of y'all young niggas, man. Y'all be on YouTube talking about marketing y'all self as a motherfucker who keeps shit real. Y'all keep shit real. Where's your real name at there, motherfucker? Where's your real name at there, motherfucker? My birth certificate name is on my YouTube channel. What about you? What about you? Talk to me. Talk to me. I'm listening. What about you? Why are you using a nickname, a pseudonym, a street name, and you talking about you keep it real? Nigga, I said last year and I said again, ain't no motherfucking nigga on YouTube more real than this nigga you listening to right now. Quote me on that. I'm the most real motherfucker on this bitch. And one of the ways I prove it is I use my real birth certificate name on my channel, motherfucker. I know somebody get ready to write in my comments and say, oh shit, ARC and Beast Mode, ARC and Savage Beast Mode. Hey man, I'm going to try it again. This ain't going to be no lengthy admonishment. But motherfucker, miss me with that shit about how real you are and you ain't using your real birth certificate name on your YouTube channel. Yeah, man, I keep shit real. I always keep shit 1,000. I'm a real motherfucker. Yeah, go to my YouTube channel. It's JJack123 on YouTube. JJack123. Nigga, miss me with that shit. Don't ever classify yourself as more real than me and you don't use your real name. Ever. Nigga, please. No nigga in my father's generation went around using street names and shit, man. Fuck that shit, nigga. Ever since I came on the scene, I've used my real birth certificate name. I ain't got nothing to hide, motherfucker. <sighs> Secondly, man, 
Y'all talking about manhood and y'all always talking about bitches. I'm a real man. I'm a real man. But hey, man, I want to talk about this, man. Bitches be doing this and bitches be doing that. And bitches piss me off when they do that. And bitches piss me off when they say that. Really? Really? Insert dog face here. Nigga, I told y'all the story about what, how my father laid me out in 1995. I'll never forget. I was working at NBC. Now, I was never one to whine and complain about women in my personal and social life. I, I can say that about myself. I ain't never been that type of brother. But I used to do a lot of whine and complain about women in the workplace. Because I always hated having a job where I either had a female boss or too many female coworkers. I would always find myself whining about that shit. And one day I was working at NBC Studios in Burbank, California. I was on the phone with my father, man, just doing a whole bunch of wine and thinking he about to co-sign with me. And see, my father, he wasn't one to use profanity, harsh language, because he's such an intelligent brother, man. My brother, my father was super duper intelligent. He had an extensive vocabulary. So you could say he broke me down in a very intelligent, articulate, and eloquent manner. But I'm a paraphrase what he basically said to me on a street level, in layman's terms. I'm a, I'm a paraphrase what my father said to me. He was basically like, nigga, stop that whining and bitching, motherfucker, and you call yourself my son. Stop that whining and bitching. You sound like a bitch. Doing all that whining and complaining about your, my female boss, my female coworkers, dad, they made it with me, dad. They, they, they ain't telling me what to do, dad. And I don't like working for women, man. Shut that shit up, nigga. And you call yourself my son. Again, this one, he didn't actually say this, but I'm paraphrasing this so you motherfuckers understand how my father came at me. He was like, motherfucker, if you don't like working for women, guess what? That means you got work to do so you can be your own boss. If you don't like having female coworkers or too many of them, guess what? That means you got work to do so that you don't have to work around women. But until that day comes, until that day comes, yeah, you need to just suck it up and shut the Fuck up. That's what you need to do. Until that day comes, you need to sh you suck it up and shut the fuck up. Grow some backbone, man. Quit all this whining and shit. That shit is, is and this is what he did specifically say. He said that shit's unmanly. Whining and bitching about women, that shit's unmanly. And I, you remember my infamous admonishments I did in the latter half of 2017. I didn't do too many in 2018. But I'm going to tell you again, man. If y'all sitting around, just all you're doing is whining and complaining about bitches' behavior, that's just unmanly, man. It's just unmanly, man. I know a lot of y'all do it just so you can attract YouTube viewers, YouTube subscribers, because y'all know niggas love drama, which they do. Niggas love drama. But that shit is unmanly, man. Always talking about what women do. Hey, if a woman is exhibiting spoiled behavior towards you, Two or more times, guess whose fault that is? That's your fault. If a woman is exhibiting disrespectful behavior towards you, she did it a minimum of two times or more, guess whose fault that is? That's your fault. If a woman is exhibiting just under any form of undesirable behavior towards you, minimum of two or more times, guess whose fault that is? That's your fault. Don't be blaming women, man. You allowed the shit. You allowed the shit. All these men in society have allowed women to just run rap shot over society and shit. Hey, man, you got to get this to women, man. When women want to see changes, they get shit done. Yeah, I said it. When women want to see changes on their behalf, they get shit done. Just like gays and lesbians. When they want some changes, they get shit done. What y'all niggas doing? Other than bitching on YouTube. What y'all niggas doing? What y'all niggas doing? Y'all ain't doing shit. Y'all ain't doing shit but talking on YouTube. Y'all ain't changing shit. What public policies y'all changing? Huh? What? I'm listening. Tell me. Huh? What? What? Talk to me, man. Talk to me. What are y'all changing up? What are y'all doing other than talking shit on the YouTube channel? Man, women are running shit in a lot of aspects of life in society. Women are running shit. They allow their voices to get heard in a meaningful way. They don't just bitch on YouTube in a meaningful way, man. Do your research on the second wave of feminism, man. They changed society. That's why I wrote my book, Debate American Revolution, man. 
I talked about that at the 21 convention last year. And a lot, I'm sure a lot of men in the audience didn't want to hear that shit. But I say, hey, man, you got to give it up for women, man. They, they basically was like, I don't want to fuck these undesirable beta males anymore. I don't want my dad pressuring me to fuck an undesirable beta male. And they changed shit in their favor. What are you doing? What are you changing in your favor, motherfucker? On these YouTube channels talking shit. What are you changing in your favor? Let me know. Final thing on a more personal level. On a more personal level. To do with me. Motherfuckers worried about the activities of my dick. Why are you worried about the activities of my dick? Hey, you a man. You call yourself a man. But you worried about the activities of my dick. My dick is happy. <laughs> okay? My dick is happy. Is your dick happy? Because here's how I look at it. If my dick is being pleased and satisfied, and your dick is being pleased and satisfied, then why do you and I have beef? Because we both got happy dicks. Two motherfuckers with happy dicks should not have beef. Two motherfuckers with happy dicks should not have beef. So if my dick is being pleased and satisfied by the quality and qu quantity of women that I'm satisfied with, and your dick is being pleased and satisfied by the quality and quantity of women that you're satisfied with, why is my name in your mouth? Why is my name in your mouth, motherfucker? The reason I'm thinking my name in your mouth because your dick is unhappy. Mm. Your dick ain't happy. Your dick is unhappy. And you jealous that my dick is happy. Why are you worried about my dick? Don't worry about the activities of my dick. Worry about your dick. I wrote some books to help a lot of you guys gain a happy dick. Check them out. Read them. And speaking of my books, final thing. Final thing. I wrote the book, motherfucker. <laughs> you can hate on me all you want. I know a lot of you surely will from now until, what's that thing my mother used to say? To kingdom come. <laughs> the kingdom come. That means forever. Yeah. This is my column. From now until kingdom come. I know I'm going to have hater raid from different haters. I just got to accept that. But all I can say I wrote the book. See, there used to be a saying, man. I don't, I don't think young brothers use this. But see, when I was growing up, I grew up in Gary, Indiana, right next door to Chicago, home of the Jackson Five, Michael Jackson. And if anybody felt like they was really good at something, really good at some area, some skill, some talent, they would lightheartedly say, man, I'm so good at that shit. I wrote the book on that. Like, if we was playing basketball, somebody was really good at dribbling between their legs and doing crossover dribbles. And everybody start gassing up that dude's head. They would be like, damn, you know, Leon, man, you got some mad dribbling skills, man. Damn, man, you're crossing over everybody. Leon would say, man, what are y'all talking about, man? I wrote the book on the crossover dribble. I wrote the book on that shit. If we'd be at a party and somebody was really good at mixing drinks, they might be like, damn, these drinks are the bomb, man. I didn't know you was a, a top-notch bartender, man. Where you learn how to mix drinks like this? Whoever it was, say his name was Ralph. He said, oh, man, I don't know why y'all tripping, man. I wrote the book on mixing drinks. I wrote the book on that shit. If a guy was good at pulling women to the point where he was getting a lot of props from his, his close friends and acquaintances, they say, man, you got away with women, man. What's your secret? He said, oh, man, what you talking about, man? I wrote the book on that shit. I wrote, Alan Roger Curry wrote the book. Literally, not figuratively speaking, literally. Where is your book at? Where is your book at? I wrote the book on being real, authentic, and having big-ass verbal balls. It's called Mo One. Where is your book at? I wrote the book on developing a smooth, seductive mouthpiece and being able to get women's pussies wet just by whispering shit in their left ear. I wrote the book on that. It's called Ooh, Say It Again. Where is your book at? I wrote the book on I quickly identify women who are just looking to cause you to waste time and money without giving you no pussy and without sucking your dick. They just want to exploit you for your non-sexual time, attention, and companionship, as well as exploit you for your financial resources and material possessions. It's called The Possibility of Sex. Where's your book at? I wrote a book giving people, and particularly young millennial dudes, kind of a, a, a pseudo history of how that the P 
period between 1960 and 1974 changed intersexual dynamics between men and women forever to this day. And why the dating scene today is so much different than it was, say, in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. I wrote the book on that shit, man. Where's your book? Where's your book at? Most of y'all motherfuckers on YouTube can't even write. I've seen some of y'all emails and comment section shit. Y'all can't write. Y'all would have to hire a ghostwriter. Y'all can't write. And half y'all who could write, if y'all came out with a book, y'all would end up just related to my topic of, of late. Y'all be end up just plagiarizing my shit or somebody else's, somebody else's shit. Y'all end up just repeating, regurgitating, and duplicating shit that's already been said in other people's books. Nigga, don't talk shit to a motherfucker who's an established author, man. Where is your book at? Don't market yourself as some kind of self-help guru and you ain't got no book. I said that back in 2017. I don't respect no motherfucker. I ain't, you ain't gonna never get my full respect. You might get partial respect depending on who it is. Like, I respect BGS Ipmore. He ain't got no book, but he's an intelligent, well-read brother. So he has my respect. There's a couple other guys on YouTube who don't have a book. Did I respect their knowledge, their wisdom, their insight on different aspects of life? But generally speaking, if you ain't got no book, man, miss me. <laughs> miss me, man. Because, see, I was so confident that my knowledge, wisdom, insight, and advice was so strong and so valuable, I wrote the book on that shit, man. Drops Mike. I've been on national TV, bro. I've been interviewed on national broadcast radio. I've been featured in news, national newspapers and national magazines. Have you? Alexa, who is Alan Roger Curry? Alan Roger Curry is an American dating coach, self-help author, motivational speaker, and YouTube personality. He has written advice books on dating and interpersonal relationships, verbal communication skills, identifying various manipulative mind games employed between the genders, seduction, erotic dominance and submission, and engaging in erotically explicit dirty talk with women. Trump's mic again. Where's your Wikipedia pick where, Where's your Wikipedia page at, bro? Huh? Keep my name out your mouth, man. Do one of two things. Show me your resume or keep my name out your mouth. One of the two. Show me your resume. Where's your books at? Where's your freelance articles at? Where's your national television appearances at? Where's your national broadcast radio appearances at? Motherfuckers in the peanut gallery. That's what you are. You're in the peanut gallery, man. Please, man. You ain't on my level. You never be on my level. Marinate on that shit, you haters. <laughs> Marinate on that shit. You'll never be on my level. Now, about what I really want to talk about which is also something that's bothered me, irritated me. Some of y'all motherfuckers don't know what it really means to be direct. If you remember when I had an event with Sasha Daygame in 2012, his second direct dating summit, he had all these conventional PUAs there. And a lot of them were calling their behavior and their approaches direct, but they really weren't direct. I'm going to break down what it truly means to be direct. Direct. 